Episode number 225. Welcome to All About Breastfeeding, the place where the girls hang out. I am your host, Lori Jill Eisenstadt, IBCLC, and I help moms with breastfeeding. I would love for you to check out my website, which is allaboutbreastfeeding.biz. There you could learn more about me and different ways that you could work with me. You can schedule a lactation consult so I can help you with breastfeeding. I'm so glad that you're here today for Breastfeeding Bites, the place where we give you small bites of good information that you can take in just a little at a time. You know, making the transition from being an employee to a stay-at-home mom during your maternity leave to then going back to work can be pretty overwhelming for most of us and quite emotional. Planning ahead, will help ease this transition, and that's what I'd like to help you do. Let's talk about some actions that you can take beforehand that will help you ease into this. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can best speak to your employer about breastfeeding and or pumping when you return to work. My goal is to have you thinking about and planning for your return to work before you even leave during your pregnancy. The biggest concerns that moms have when pumping at work are having the appropriate place to pump and having the time that you need in order to pump during your workday. You know, your pregnancy is a great time to do your homework. And if you're about to say that you're so busy now, when can you possibly find the time to do this? Here is what I would like you to think about. You don't think you have a lot of time during your pregnancy to make sure you have everything that you need to put a plan into place for returning back to work. But believe me, most moms will say, in fact, if you just ask two or three new moms who have recently returned to work and ask them if they didn't plan on their return back to work during their pregnancy, just ask them, how hard was it for your maternity leave to make certain plans about returning to work? We all think we're so incredibly busy, and we are, but in actuality, I bet you anything, you're going to have more time during your pregnancy to figure these things out than you will have during your maternity leave. What I'd like you to do is start by using the time during your pregnancy to learn as much as you can about what your options are. Learn about your rights for nursing mothers at your company. A great website to go to if you're in the United States is usbreastfeeding.org. They have a lot of wonderful resources there, and there's one page that's titled Workplace Support in Federal Law, and that has a lot of good information, and it also has a directory with links to breastfeeding coalitions in most of the states. And then you can click that on to find out what the law is in the exact state that you are working in. This is important because the laws are not universal and they can change. There are employees who, you know, they may not be obligated under your state law to follow the Fair Labor Standards Act. For instance, if your place of employment has less than 50 employees, they're not subject to the same laws and requirements that other companies are. That's a big eye opener for people. Just because companies are not required to do so, by the same token, don't assume that they will not take care of their employees. Many companies, they already see the benefits of providing a safe and comfortable place for you to pump. Some companies, they haven't had a mom do this before, and they need a mom like you to pave the way for other nursing moms. And I want you to also try hard not to get too demanding and too hung up with the perfect place to pump. It might be nice to have a room that's dedicated just for pumping. It's decorated nicely. It has a refrigerator and a sink and pretty wallpaper and a very comfortable chair for you to pump in, a stool, some extra pillows, and perhaps they're even leasing some hospital-grade pumps for you to use. Your company 
may be able to provide a room like that, or they may be able to provide a room that's just good enough, but it doesn't fit this picture. The location provided must be functional as a space for expressing breast milk. If the space is not dedicated to the nursing mother's use, at least it just needs to have a temporary space. It could be a converted space for expressing milk or made available when needed by the nursing mother. And that might be sufficient as long as it's private, away from the view of other people and employees and clean. I've put a link into this show notes that has an interesting video that will surely have you doing what I'd like you to do, which is thinking outside the box. In this video, for example, it shows an employee from the Los Angeles Fire Department. And what they've done is each fire department, each firehouse has a dedicated lactation room. So whenever an employee is anywhere around the city, they can stop off at any of the firehouses and use the pumping room. Another example is employees who are working outdoors and on a farm. Now that's going to be really difficult. Perhaps the employer has the best interest in mind, but you have to get creative. So some are saying pump in your car if you like. If you don't bring your car to work, some supervisors are letting you pump in their car. Some places they're bringing in a tent, and it's a tent where there's a just a table and a place for you to sit and use your pump, but it's clean and it's private. Optimal no, workable, I would say so. I've seen some hotels, well, they designate an empty room so that moms can use this for pumping. They've also used this for women who attend conferences and need to pump. I've seen that before. You can also have a place, there's a place on the video, it's a bakery, and it's run by a mom and dad, and they employ quite a few women of childbearing age. And the mother, the owner, she had to pump at work herself also. And they have made the bakery very breastfeeding friendly, whereas some of the employees know that they might have to jump in and help someone while that mother goes and pumps. One Walmart, well, it has a dressing room that they designated for moms who need to pump or moms who just want to sit and nurse their baby. Again, thinking outside the box, in a perfect world, all of our working places would have the perfect designated room to pump in. There are laws that are made to protect you. I know this, and I would love it if all employers adhere to the law. Some just cannot and others just won't. Try and be creative and see how you might get your needs met without upsetting the apple cart and fighting the fight. It might not be optimal, but it might be very workable. One other stressor for moms is thinking about how they're going to find time to pump during working hours. This is definitely a subject you will want to bring up. Do not shy about it during your pregnancy. Just like finding the right place to pump, speaking with your employer or HR is another subject that a lot of pregnant moms seem to shy away from. They're afraid to bring it up, but you're going to have to deal with it eventually. And how nice would it be during your maternity leave that you already know what to expect when you go back to work? Just a lot less for you to stress about. It is far better to have this discussion during your pregnancy than trying to figure it out the first few days back at work. So my best suggestions are to go to the website that I mentioned, usbreastfeeding.org, to find out about the federal law when it comes to providing nursing or pumping breaks for breastfeeding moms. So know your rights. Another thing that's really great for you to do is see if you can connect with another mom who's recently back to work that you know is breastfeeding and pumping and ask her how her discussion with the employer went. Ask her for tips and tricks on how she goes about doing it. You may be actually pleasantly surprised that she's finding it easy, there's a comfortable place for her, and everything that you're concerned about is a non-issue. Wouldn't that be lovely? You know, your company may also have policies in place, and they're working out quite well for the employer and the employee. Sometimes what happens is before you're pregnant or breast pumping, you don't really realize that all this stuff is going on around the office. You just really weren't paying attention. But now that you are, your antennas are up, 
and you're seeing other moms and nothing better than finding out from another pumping mom how she's working it out in your company. The other thing that you want to do is try and be creative. Know how many times that you're going to need to pump. Now, when I say know how many, it depends. If you're working a 12-hour shift, I bet you anything your baby's going to breastfeed four or five times during that time that you're away, which means that you're going to need to be pumping as many times as they're taking a bottle. The same thing for you if you're working an average Monday through Friday job, nine to five. More than likely, you're going to be gone for at least three feedings and possibly four. So anywhere between three and five pumpings, I would say, depending upon what job you have, that you're going to need. And you can talk to them about it. And you might find out that their answers surprise you and that they've worked out something with other employees that is quite amenable to them. If you're not happy with what you hear, perhaps you can offer some suggestions. What you want to do is begin by letting your employer know how important it is that you provide milk for your baby and that you appreciate their concern about you coming back to work and being able to work it out. Give them something solid to think about. Give them suggestions or just lay it out to them what you think it's going to be like. You could say, listen, I know that I will need to pump at least three times. Now, one is during my lunch time, so it's not a problem, and twice it's during the breaks. But the thing is, our breaks are 15 minutes, and it might take me 20, 25 between capping the bottles, storing the milk, and cleaning the parts. And so you need to let them know that you're going to be flexible, and you're prepared to be flexible so that you could find the time that you need because it's that important to you. You can make a few suggestions, like perhaps you'll come in a half hour earlier each day. Maybe you'll leave a half hour later each day. Maybe you'll just take a shorter lunch to make up for the time. Some employers offer to some employees offer to work while they pump. You might have a job where you can save some email time while you're pumping. You can perhaps do some charting while you're pumping. Again, be creative. They have wonderful hands-free bras. You can hook everything up and pump and then start to do some work. And that might be good enough for your employer. So approaching your employer with the acknowledgement that this will be different for both of you, but it's important to you and you're open to putting your heads together to making an arrangement that is flexible enough for both of you to have your needs met. This is always a great place to start. And while we continue to work on changing the laws and work on every place of employment so you don't need to have to go through this, be flexible and figure something out where you're working before you actually have to return to work. I don't want you losing out on providing milk for your baby or to be stressed out because you're busy fighting the fight. You know, 10 years ago, pumping at work, the situation was really bad. I would say maybe 20, 30 percent of moms had what I would say was a really good situation with employers who were not only very understanding, but encouraging. And it's changed. Five years ago, it was a lot better. And now in 2017, I would say that probably about 80 percent of mothers have a good thing going on while they work. Their employers have a space dedicated to it. It's clean. It's private. There may be some glitches, some kinks to work out when they start pumping themselves until the moms get into the groove. But all in all, moms are finding it much better. And I would say maybe 10 to 20% of the moms that I work with now are giving me a big heavy sigh and are feeling stressed because their situation is not a good one. Like I said, it's a lot better than what it was 10 years ago, and things are going to change for the better. It's not perfect. However, it is huge progress in the last 10 years. Until the next show, bye-bye. This is Lori Jolisenstadt saying thank you for watching today's show. And if you like the show and want to make sure you don't miss another one, just press that subscribe button below. And also, anybody who knows me knows that my mantra is, don't let all about breastfeeding be your best kept secret. 
please like the button below and share this show with every pregnant and new mother that you know that may be interested in anything related to breastfeeding. You can also go to allaboutbreastfeeding.biz and there you will find lots more information about myself, the services that I provide, and you will also get the whole library all free of all the shows, the 120 guests that I've interviewed about all subjects related to breastfeeding. That's at allaboutbreastfeeding.biz. And the last thing is my gift to you. If you go to allaboutbreastfeeding.biz slash seven secrets, you will get my handout on the seven secrets to breast pumping. See you on the next show.